I want to welcome everyone um, to Nature Journaling Small Mammals. And I think I'm going to have um, Julia start us off. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Um, just real quick, let me see if I can get to my notes here. I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for being here for supporting nature and stewardship of our natural world. We really appreciate you all being here and for joining us on the call. I will go ahead and share my screen really quick. Okay, so if it's your first time joining us, welcome to the museum. Uh, we'll put on our little, you know, imagination cap and pretend we're all visiting us right here in Pacific Grove. Um, for uh, nature journaling, and we're going to be doing small mammals today. So very excited. Welcome to the museum. Um, this is a look inside. So picture, if you will, we're all going to kind of go upstairs on the left to our um, small mammals exhibit, where we will be taking a look at some of our smaller creatures that live here on the central coast. Um, you know, I have a very tender spot for <laughs> what some call pests, but I'm just like, oh, they're so adorable. So today we get to kind of take a look at those. Um, and I'm really excited about that. And I also just wanted to say thank you so much to Melinda and for Nicole for being here on the call today and for your partnership as well. Um, and for everyone, <clears throat> I just wanted to say thank you as well. This is a free nature journaling workshop. But if you are feeling inspired to donate and keep programs like this running, um, I put links here um, as well as we'll put in the chat as well to donate to Spark in Nature, Melinda Nakagawa's um, organization, and to Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History as well. And so with that, Melinda, I'll go ahead and let you take it away. All right. Thank you, Julia. Um, I wanted to introduce um, our co-host co um, here, Nicole Rodney. And so she's here going to answer any um, issues if you have any technical um, questions or questions about the, um, what you're seeing. And, or if you can't see something, you can just send a little message to Nicole and she can help, help you out. Um, and if you had any questions about the museum, you can um, send a message over to Julia. But I wanted to um, just encourage everyone today to just, we have an, uh, an hour. It's, it's a really short period of time to just introduce you to nature journaling and some mammals and how we observe nature and put them into our journal. So I wanna encourage you to spend um, as much time as possible um, practicing journaling and following along with me, looking at what we're, what we're seeing on the screen. And if you have questions, um, maybe keep them on in your journal and not feel like they all have to be answered um, in the chat. So I'm going to, you know, just encourage everyone to just focus on your nature journaling. An hour is um, a really short time, but it's a really good amount of time to kind of get, get started and dive in. So I'm going to start um, with a, sh a little presentation here. Let's see here. All right. I need to go forward. All right. Okay, so um, I want to thank the Pacific Grove Museum for hosting this and giving me an opportunity to teach you about nature journaling and using some of their specimens and just wanted to highlight the amazing work that the museum does in our community. So if you're not already a member or have never visited, I really encourage you when we're able to get back together to go stop by the museum, check out the exhibits, talk to Julia and other folks that are there and learn a little bit more about uh, the world around us. But in the meantime, we're gonna be online and we're gonna be using some of the, um, the specimens to get you closer to nature. So first I just wanna start out um, talking about what is nature journaling? So nature journaling is um, basically observing nature and then recording what we see and experience on, onto paper. And um, we use words and pictures and numbers to, in combination to put that on a page. And this is really just showing what we're thinking about. So for example, on this page, there's drawings and there's also um, um, words here to describe some things and um, numbers, we can count and measure things. 
So we're using a lot of um, three different ways to in incorporate what we're seeing onto the page. And so nature journaling is really more about how we pay attention to nature and less about making a pretty picture. So if you um, are um, you know, new to drawing or um, you know, want to improve your drawing skills, you know, using drawing to learn about nature is what we do in nature journaling. So the more that you draw, the better you will get. But this is not an art class, so we're not focusing on the techniques of drawing. We're really focusing on the techniques of nature journaling, and that is observation. All right, so some examples of words, pictures, and numbers. Um, on this page, there's um, a series of different little um, squash blossoms that I counted and labeled and measured, took measurements. That's how you can put numbers in your page. Um, you can put drawings on there to show like a diagram of what this looks like, um, maybe a three-dimensional picture. Um, you can have um, unfinished drawing sketches. You can have little pictures of, um, of other things as a little gopher. I didn't actually see the gopher, but I know because they're eating all my plants. So he got into that nature journal page. So we're drawing what we're experiencing in nature. And along with these three languages, we have three sentence starters, I'll, I'll just say, and that's to help us kind of um, think about what we want to put on the page. And the first thing is observation. So we're going to observe what we see, and we're going to ask um, or write this sentence down, I notice. And then you can fill in the blanks. You know, I noticed this flower has yellow petals, that it has three outer petals and three inner petals, or I noticed this bird has black feathers on his head. And we're gonna practice a little bit today. So um, I'm just gonna introduce those three sentence starters. First is I notice. The second is I wonder, and this is about being curious, right? Tapping into that curious part of um, our nature and looking at this thing in nature and just asking, like, gosh, gosh, this fish has a really weird shape. I, I wonder why it has that shape. I wonder if it helps it eat whatever it's eating. I wonder if this bird, um, you know, can open the shells with such a weird shaped beak. So just asking all kinds of questions. And in the wonderings, um, I encourage you not to filter your questions. Just put down every question that comes to your mind um, because questioning is really um, giving, honing that ability to be curious. And the more questions you ask, the more interesting questions will arise. So that first question that pops to mind, it's often not the most interesting question. And then you can just put them on your page wherever there's room. There's no rules about how your page should look. These are just different examples of how a nature journal page might look. Um, and the third part is it reminds me of. So this is about making connections with nature. So it might remind you of another type of flower, for example, or it might remind you of something that's not natural. Maybe it reminds you of a piece of machinery, or maybe something in nature reminds you of your childhood. So when we start making connections with the thing that's in front of us, with something else in our knowledge, we're reinforcing this observation. So um, really thinking about, you know, what does this remind you of? So try to come up with something for each of your, um, each of what you're, you're looking at. Okay, so now we're gonna dive in. We are going to pretend like we're all together and we're outside watching this uh, bobcat. And um, we're going for a walk on this trail and suddenly there's movement in the bushes. And we all stop and we're really quiet. Because when we're in nature and we wanna see something really special like this, like an animal, if we move around, make a lot of noise, the wildlife will probably run off, right? So if we're quiet and still, that's gonna increase our opportunity to watch nature a little bit longer, especially if it's an animal. So we come across this bobcat and it's walking across this road. What do you notice? Now everyone's muted right now, but I want you to just look at this scene and imagine that we're all standing together and seeing this bobcat, what do you notice? And say out loud what you notice, because when you say it out loud, it really helps you remember it. And, um, and um, you can also jot it down on your page if you want to on, on the section of your page with the bobcat. 
so what do you notice about this? I might say, I'll give you an example for this first one. I notice that the bobcat is looking away from me. It doesn't even notice me. I notice that the bobcat is looking like he wants to cross the street. I notice um, it has a very short curved tail. I notice it has dark black spots on the lower part of his front legs, um, but not on his body. I notice it looks like a large house cat. I notice its long whiskers. I notice pointy ears. I notice its posture, his back legs seem kind of um, bent, but his front legs are upright. So you might have had some of the same noticings or maybe something different. So we're gonna go on to the next part of I wonder. So to yourself, think about what kinds of things you wonder from this game when you see this bobcat. I wonder who he's looking at. I wonder if he sees a, um, a prey or maybe he sees a predator. I wonder, I wonder how old this bobcat is. It looks like a kitten. I wonder if it's young or I wonder if it's a grown up. I wonder why its tail is so short. I wonder why it has all of these um, speckles on his body. I wonder why it has long hairs on the tip of his ears. I wonder why his paws look so big. Right, and you might have some other wonderings. Now the third part is what does it remind you of? It reminds me of a fur coat, just a beautiful coat. Um, it reminds me of a house cat, but larger. It kind of reminds me of a tiger in some parts of its body. It reminds me of the time that I saw a bobcat um, in Connell Valley. Or maybe you're there and you smell something or hear, hear a sound. Maybe there's a sound going on in your nature. Not just what we see, but what do we notice in the air? What do we sense on our skin? What smells might be coming around? So these are the things that we're gonna put on our page. And along with that, we might sketch a drawing um, of, this, of this bobcat. And I'm gonna share Let's see, I'm going to share, oops. All right. And I'm gonna sketch this bobcat. So when I'm in nature and I see something like this, I'm going to use gesture sketches. And I think some of you may have encountered this with me before. So for those of you who are new, I'm just going to say that um, I'm not going to draw all the details of this bobcat because if I'm in nature and I see it, I might only have like 30 seconds or maybe I might be lucky to have a minute or two to draw this. So I'm going to use a technique called gesture sketching. And this is just um, notice looking at the subject and looking at the basic shapes. So I see a big kind of a oval or rectangular shape of its body. So I'm going to use light pencil sketches and just lightly put that in there. I also see a big kind of mass, body mass of his shoulders. And then he's got a head up here and then the muzzle and then his ears. So then I'm going to look at this and say, do I have the proportions right? Well, it looks like maybe his body is actually a little bit longer than I have. And I'm going to just add some legs in here and I'm not going to put a whole lot of detail because he's he's going to walk away any moment so I'm going to quickly put like general shapes of where this the parts of the body are right and he's got this little tail so that might be all that I get of this um of this mammal and if he stays still for a little longer then I can refine a little bit more because I think his belly's a little bit skinnier Right, and then so if we block in with these basic shapes, then we can go and refine it a little bit more and start adding more lines. His back leg is actually sticking out a little bit. 
And some of the techniques we look for are the, the lines that are made on the negative spaces. So along his back, where the, the, the line between the air and, and his back. And then maybe looking at under his front legs, this square, I'm gonna point with my pointer, the square right here. Whoops, let's go back. Back, back, back. Um, this shape, this kind of trapezoid shape. So I'm gonna pencil that in on my page. And when you're looking at negative shapes, it gives you um, a good, uh, it gives you a good way of blocking in the animal. And so then I'm gonna look at like this shape over under the chin into the chest, this kind of angled line and down. And don't worry if your sketch does not look like a bobcat because drawing um, in the field really quickly can be a little tricky. So we're gonna just do the best we can. I'm not gonna put in a whole lot of details because I'm trying to capture the basic feel of this bobcat. All right. All right. And, oh, now it's run away. So now it's gone and I'm gonna finish writing my questions. Right, so if you have, if you've already started to write your questions, that's really great. So you might do, I notice these things, and then maybe I notice these things about him. So these are going to be words, and then I wonder, I like to put a question mark or a little cue here, and I wonder, these are the things that I wonder about him. Um, and maybe it reminds me of, oh. And I forgot the most important thing. On every Nature Journal page, we wanna make sure that we put some metadata. And metadata is uh, just a fancy word for information about today. So today, what's in important is the date. And today is September 18th, so we'll put today's date. And um, the time, because you know sometimes certain animals only come out at certain times of the day, so I'm gonna put 5.50 p.m. And I'm gonna put, um, well, today we're in a nature journaling workshop, so I, I might write nature journaling workshop with the PG Museum and Linda. And that way, when you come back to your journal and you see this page, you know what you were looking at. And maybe if I know what animal it is that I saw, um, I might say um, bobcat. Um, you can also put labels, short tail, pointy ears, spots on front legs. You don't have to put the same things that I did, but this, I'm just giving you an idea that the journal page is not just about the picture, but it's about the combination of everything that we're seeing. All right. So, uh, moving on to the, the next um, portion I wanted to talk about is um, start practicing being okay with not answering your questions. So I've asked you in this section, I wonder, um, to put down all the questions that come to your mind and kind of walk through it together with this slide. But um, you know, when you approach a nature journaling subject, I'm gonna ask you to just stop and just Think about all the questions that pop into your mind. And maybe as you're drawing, a question might pop into your mind. Like, you know, I wonder why, blah, blah, blah. Or, huh, I wonder how he uses this part of his leg. Um, and then just put those questions down on your page. And we're, we, we live in a culture of um, really easily getting answers to our questions, right? Many of us have, um, I don't know if you can see one of these things, a little a phone or a computer nearby. And it's so easy to type into, um, into the computer and say, why does this blah, blah, blah? Or what is this? What does this eat? Where does it live? And we get the answer right away. But I'm going to in, um, just challenge you to stop, not figure out all the answers. You, you can later, but, but when you're journaling, see if you can just sit with it. So in this example, here's a flying insect that landed on the leaf and this person is going, gosh, what is it? Well, if he had a friend next to him and, and the friend says, well, it's just a yellow jacket, you know, and, and then they walk away because it's just a yellow jacket. But if you didn't know it was a yellow jacket, you're going to be observing it more carefully so that you can identify it later. 
And then you might notice things that you never noticed before about how many stripes it has on its body or the behavior that it's doing. So by not answering your questions, you actually learn. So today I'm going to ask you to just keep your questions. And so if you have a question that pops up, write it down in your journal on your page. And that's going to help you stay curious, right? Because if we ask a question and then it's the better we learn and the more so again the purpose is to see more of nature to stay in curiosity so not necessarily about the answer right that's that's the way like we, we think in schools right we raise our hand we know the answer we want to answer the right answer and we want to be the first one to get that answer right but this is this is not school this is about really being um observant in nature being close to nature learning about nature and um focusing on nature journaling is practice is going to help you do that all right so um today we're talking about some small mammals and mammals um most of you probably know they're warm-blooded animals that um, breathe air they have fur or hair on their bodies and they generally give live birth um, and they feed their babies milk um, there's always exceptions to the, those rules, but that's generally what um, what mammals are. And here's a, a few samples of different kinds of mammals here. You can see they all have fur, and they maybe all of them have four legs, except for the otter. The last two legs are are, are flippers. Um, and the museum has a collection of a lot of um, taxidermied specimens. They're local native specimens. And so I'm just going to um, show, highlight a few of them. You'll, you'll have to go to the museum to see them all because they have a really amazing um, collection. But here we have bobcats, just like the one that we were watching crossing the street. Um, two bobcats, um, one is batting a, a local um, buckeye butterfly. Um, and let's see, we just stick to bobcat. And we're going to move on to a small mammal. And this is a mammal called a, um, a mole. And these guys are, um, are living under the ground and they are eating earth, mostly earthlings. So um, they're um, not necessarily eating our plants, although they kind of get in the way and make, maybe make our plants get knocked over, but they're just really busy looking for insects. So I thought maybe we'd, we'd sketch this mole a little bit. So um, why don't you take your nature journal and um, go to a, another little section, and we're going to do this little mole. And first, I'm going to block out. I think I'm going to do both of them, and I'm going to zoom, uh, do a zoom out. So this is the technique that's really helpful in nature drawing. So one is drawing the whole, the whole animal. Um, so I'm going to draw the one on the right. So I see kind of an oval, an oval shape. And he's got... Um, Kind of a pointy snout that sticks out. And he has these hands. I can't see his um, hand on this side. So I'm going to draw what I see. So with Nature Journal, we always draw what we see, not what we think is supposed to be there, right? I think he's supposed to have another hand here, but I'm not going to draw it in there. I'm only going to draw what I see. And so as I'm kind of blocking up the shape, He's pretty much just kind of an oval, isn't he? Um, with this little claw that's sticking out. And I can't see a whole lot of detail from this view, so that's okay. I'm just gonna um, put in whatever detail I can see. And what I see is pretty much like a shape, he's kind of shaped like a potato. And can't even see his eyes. And then I might just suggest some fur here. And then maybe what I might write is um, all brown fur all over. One hand with claws. Um, I notice pink snout without hair. Um, what else do we notice? Oh, I think I might put a little bit of the background to give it context. Um, I don't have a ruler 
um, with me when I saw this mole, but maybe um, I can measure the redwood branches that are there. Right, here's, here's some redwood branches and maybe there's some more over here. And another one lined up here. So if we were watching this mole and it came out and we um, drew this mole and then it ran away and hid underground and I couldn't measure it, what I might do is I might take uh, my ruler that I have with me and go over and measure this um, little redwood branch because the one next to it was about the same size and I can measure the branch to get an estimate of how big this mole was. Um, and oh, here's a redwood cone for scale. So I have a little scale, or, sorry, uh, redwood cone. And a little branch. Not worried about all the, like exactly getting the needles and the detail because um, when I'm in the field and we're looking at something in nature, we're just sketching it. We're not doing an illustration or you know, uh, a botanical or um, like a scientific illustration, and we're just getting the feel of it. And then I might um, you know, add some color. So if you have you know, your colored pencils, you can pull out your brown and um, add some color to them. Um, or if you prefer using watercolor, you can add some um, watercolor to, I'm gonna grab mine really quick. Um, I'm today I have some watercolor, so I'm going to mix kind of this mousy brown color. And I think that that's about right. And I'm just going to add this brown all over here. And there's my mole. Um, oh, and he has the pink snout, so I'm gonna dry off my brush. And it's actually kind of a peachy color. Let's see if I can get that light peachy color. Kind of orangey. Maybe that's pretty soon. There we go. All right. And then um, I might want to put a sense of scale. So let's pretend that um, I measured this, the, the redwood branches. I'm not sure exactly how big this particular mole is, but let's say those branches were about seven, about seven centimeters. So then I might say, um, because I didn't measure it exactly, I'll say it's about seven centimeters. And I'll put a note here, the mole um, it doesn't really run, but I'm going to say uh, <laughs> ran into its hole. So I measured the branch for an estimate. Right. So I'm just saying it's not exactly um, the size. And if I know what it is, I'll just put mole. And then a cool thing is we're going to do a zoom, a zoom out. So let's pretend that this picture here on the left-hand side is actually this mole that we're looking at. So what I might do is, this is a really fun technique. It's called like zooming in. So I'm going to zoom into this part of the, of the body. And the, one of the ways that I like to do it is draw... So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna draw an arrow that gets bigger. Right, you can keep it open or you can color it in. I'm not sure why I'm deciding to color it in today, but there we go. All right. So then I'm gonna say, okay, now I'm zooming in because I got a really I got a really good look at that mole before it went away. And I'm looking at the page on the left now. And so I'm going to, um, maybe I can enlarge, well, no, we'll just we'll keep it here for now. Um, and I'm going to draw, right, again, we're going to do light pencil um, shading. His head is kind of circular here, maybe a little pointed where the snout is. And then this interesting 
fault. I don't even know what you call this, right? And that's okay. You don't have to know the body parts of anything that we're looking at, but just um, notice, gosh, look at these claws. And I see one, two, one, two, three, four, five claws. One, two, three, four. It's the fifth one over here. Um, it is so strange. They look like little fingers. Um, so I might say um, five long claws. Oh, look, I can see the nostrils on, I think they're nostrils, two little dots on top. And then he's got another paw over here. So I'm going to do a circle to kind of get the location and then his claws. And I'm going to say um, the claws, um, pink skin and a pink nose with two nostrils. Sorry, I can't see that, two nostrils. Um, and also, uh, let's say that I'm there and I'm able to touch it. Um, and I'm touching this mole and saying, oh my gosh, it is so velvety soft. So I might say, has velvety soft fur. And maybe my question might be, oh, oh here's a question. I'm going to put a question. Why does it have such soft fur? How does it help the mole? Um, what else might you ask? Like, look at the long claws. I wonder what he uses the claws for. I wonder what he uses the claws for. Right, so you're going to be coming up with your noticings and wonderings and it reminds me of these. Um, and I'm touching this mole and the fur reminds me of um, velvet or it feels like velvet. Mole's fur feels like velvet. All right. Oh, and I might say, I can't see its eyes. Can't see its eyes. And I like to put big question marks when I have um, interesting observations that I want to um, notice. Um, so, gosh, how does it see? So maybe that, that's a question that comes up. How does it see? How does it find food? Now, at this point, someone very smart sitting next to me might say, well, Melinda, everybody knows that moles, blah, blah, blah. And if they give me the answer on, if they answer all my questions for me, then, then it kind of like takes the fun out of it, right? Well, at least I think I do. I think it does. And I think it's more fun if I just sit with the questions and say, hmm, well, if it doesn't have very large eyes, I wonder how it finds the food. And maybe I might come up with a theory and say, perhaps it uses its sense of smell, right? He has a little nose at the front with the two nostrils way up in front. So I wonder if he uses a sense of smell instead of sight. So now we're starting to learn a little bit about moles without even going to Google and looking it up, right? We're learning from our observations. And if this mole is alive and moving around, we might learn a lot more about mole behavior by watching him. All right, moving on. Oh, here's a close up. Oh, and he's got little tiny, tiny, tiny whiskers. All right. So a few other um, mammals that they have, one is um, uh, the California gray squirrel. And um, this is one of the native squirrels that live here. And you can see, like, just by looking at the squirrel, what, what, do, you, what do you think, um, or what do you notice about its behavior? 
yeah, I see that it's standing on a, um, or hanging onto a trunk. So I think maybe this is a tree climbing squirrel and not one that lives underground because we have ground squirrels too. And he's upside down. So um, maybe, maybe he's really um, agile on the branches. And he must be a good climber. So by looking at the behavior of an animal, we can find a little bit about its lifestyle and what it does. And what do you notice about this squirrel? Yeah, I see that it has a big bushy tail. And it has teeny tiny claws. Long whiskers. Yeah, <laughs> beady eyes, yeah. Sometimes the, um, the taxidermied animals um, lose a little bit of their life. Well, I mean, literally they've lost their lives, but they, they lose a little bit of that kind of life, lifeness, liveliness. Um, but it's a really great way to study these animals up close so that you can like go to the museum and you can see the fur up close and you can see the texture, you can see the whiskers and the little feet, um, which are really hard to do with real squirrels because they're moving around so much. So we're going to go and check out this little squirrel. And so why don't we take your, um, your pencils and we're going to go and sketch the squirrel. Let's pretend like we're in the park together. Um, and in, in this oak woodland, and this little squirrel is sitting on a branch and it is busy doing something with his little hands. So um, I might at first sketch out really quickly because I think he's gonna move. So I'm gonna maybe do um, like a oval for his body. I'm gonna see an oval and then um, this, his back is kind of hunched. Do you see this, do you see this line right here? He's got from his back of his neck to his back. His back is really hunched over. So I'm going to draw a circle showing this back. And then maybe this part here where his like front arms are, right in front. And then um, I'm going to look at negative shapes here. See under his arm and his belly makes this angle. So I'm going to try to draw that angle in right now. And I'm going to put the head on top of this circle. Um, actually, maybe it's a little bit angled down a little, so it's okay. I don't need to erase. I just make those lines darker for the ones that I want to, to keep. And his little hand. And ear. So once, so once we get like these angles, then we're, we're going to, that animal is going to start to look more like what we're looking at. Up the back. And then he's got this big bushy tail that kind of goes over from behind his head. Um, um, coming back around almost as wide as his body. So I'm going to do a light tracing and belly and his feet. His feet kind of looks like a big triangle. All right, so at this point, if he runs away, it's okay, I've got enough of a squirrel um, on my page. and. The reason why we're doing this quickly, it's, a, it's called a gesture sketch, and we're not getting the details of the squirrel, we're only getting the general shapes. So right now I've done all of these ovals, right, just to get the general shape. And then later, I can go and put more detail in. But when we're outside and looking at real animals, sometimes we don't get a chance to finish all of these details, and that's totally okay. Because remember, the Nature Journal page is not about drawing, a, um, the finished picture. If we get a chance to draw a finished school, that's awesome. But really, it's more about watching a school and seeing what it does. So I'm going to start writing my noticing. So I notice while I'm drawing that it's um, it's eating something that he holds in his hands. Right? Not all animals can hold things in their hands, but a squirrel can. Um, and then I might notice, um, gosh, his tail is really airy, like I can see through it. So a very um, airy tail, or however else you want to describe it. Um, I notice that he has some colors here. He's got a white belly. 
So these kinds of details will help me identify it if I don't know what kind of animal it is. Um, and I'm going to draw the branch that he's sitting on. He's actually not sitting on his bottom. He's really resting with this, hanging on with his feet, isn't he? That's kind of cool. All right, so there you go. All right, there's my squirrel for now. And then I'm going to continue on with what other things I noticed. What do you wonder about the squirrel? I wonder what it's eating. Does it always hold its food? What does he use his tail for? Um, and then the things that it reminds you of. I think that bushy tail reminds me, um, it looks like he's wearing um, like a scarf, a fluffy scarf. Right. So you can add any other things that come up. All right, and now I want to show you. Oh, let me go back. Um, let me see if I can find this. Okay. Can you see this other picture of a squirrel? Nicole? Yes. Okay, great. Right on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yep. Move this away. Okay. All right, now I'm going to play this video. So we're going to pretend like we're outside in the woods together again and we come across the squirrel. And I want you to watch this video and pretend like you're outside with your nature journal and um, just notice what's happening and then come up with some noticings and wonderings. Um, when we're watching the squirrel. Right, and what do you wonder about this behavior? Okay, and I'm going to pause the video and then you can try maybe sketching what you see. So again, we're doing just, just the sketches and blocking out the ovals for his body and I see. Oh, he's got a really big tail. I see it's just way back behind him. He has really long ears. And I notice he's um, gray all on top. It is white underneath. Mm 
I'm going to advance this frame a little bit so we can get another view. And how about this view? And so with moving animals, you're just going to do some quick, quick little sketches. Got his head and big mask behind him. Kind of hard to make out what's going on here. He's moving so fast. So it makes me wonder, his ears are so big, I wonder if this is a baby, like a young squirrel, and he just hasn't grown into his ears. Big bushy tail behind him. All right, he's super cute over here. I want to try to get one of his hands to There we go. That's a good one. Where he's reaching out and grabbing, grabbing the needles. We're just sketching and blocking out his general shapes. A big oval for the body and then getting the legs. And I'm going to write, um, he's reaching out with sharp paws to cover something up. I don't know, is he covering something up or is he digging for something? I'm not sure, but I'm going to say that's what it looks like for now. And then maybe if we were out there in real life, we would see um, some more behavior. Maybe it's going to run away and bring another treat that he's going to bury. Um, to me, it looks like maybe he's like covering up his tracks so and no one else, no other school will know that he hid something there. So these are questions that you can put on your page. And it's okay if you don't find the answers. Because here's the thing. One day, maybe tomorrow or a week from now, you'll come across the squirrel again and you'll see him doing that behavior and you'll get a little bit more, a little more piece of evidence about what he's doing. So, um, you know, nature journaling is about really just being, staying curious and just asking lots of questions. And, you know, one of the things that I learned is that um, having um, the beginner's mind, that means having the attitude that um, I don't have all the answers and it's okay not to have all the answers. Um, it's better to be that way so that nature can give you, um, give you the mysteries that you can solve. And when we learn from our direct observation, that's directly what we're seeing, it's so much more fun and it's more rewarding and we will retain that information for so much longer. Um, I don't know about you, but I have tried, um, when I have gone and looked things up and um, on the internet or used my phone to identify a plant that's new, I don't remember the name of it, right? And um, I use iNaturalist, you know, to identify plants to help me. But if I go and I take that um, plant and, and not think of it as that is the exact right answer, because sometimes it's not, right? It's the algorithm in your computer that guesses what the plant is. You're better off just going back to that plant and writing down what you see, whether it's a bird or a squirrel or an, an ivy bush, and then noting all those little details. And then when you go to a field guide, the field guide is going to tell you all those little important details that you've observed, and then you're going to get the name of that plant. And maybe you're not going to identify it today, and that's, that's totally okay. There's no um, rush. There is no contest in nature journaling. It's all about just being curious and open-minded and discovering the world around you. So you have your entire life to find the answers. So just, you know, start to, I'm going to say just, it's really hard, right? Because we're trained to look for the answers and everything. We're trained, we're trained to have the right answer, right? And we're trained to be afraid if we don't have the answer. 
but I, I want you to know that with nature journaling, it's safe. This is your journal. No one's grading you. No one's testing you. This is your learning ground. Nature is the teacher. And you're going to explore with wonder and curiosity. And it's going to um, show you all of its wonders. And if you're writing it in your journal, you're going to remember that. And um, when you flip through your journal, you come to that page and it's gonna bring you back to that moment. I'm sure you've had that experience, right? Where you can just smell and taste and hear everything from that moment. So I'm gonna encourage um, all of you to keep your nature journal handy this week and go outside somewhere um, and focus on something. It, it doesn't have to be a moving animal. Maybe start with um, you know, the bushes or the trees that are nearby and, and take a closer look at that leaf. Maybe the leaves are turning color in where the places where you live. Maybe you can pick up one of those leaves or pluck one of the leaves and draw it carefully and see what do you notice about that leaf. And do the I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. And don't worry about not knowing the name of the thing. So, um, and, and you might find the name later. And really, it's really why we nature journal is so that we can observe nature more, more closely and we start to learn more about natural history because we're watching, right? That's what naturalists do, um, ecologists, biologists do. They watch things in nature. They measure things. They observe. They make, um, re they record everything. So you're doing what um, scientists do. Actually, you're doing what you knew how to do when you were a child, right? Go to any child. They're going to look at nature with such curiosity and fascination and ask so many millions and millions of questions that it just boggles your mind. I want you to get into that, channel that energy, right, of all the questions, because then the world will seem fresh and new and exciting. So I want to share a quote um, from Rachel Carson. Um, don't remember the exact quote, but basically the, the idea is that we go around the world with such unseeing eyes that we don't notice the things around us, right? We're busy going from place to place to our job, to whatever we need to do, to the grocery store. Do you really see the face of that person that's in line in front of you? Did you really notice what was happening with that tree on the street corner? Is it in bloom? Does it have leaves? Is it changing color? Right. So one way to start being in touch with nature is um, asking these questions. And Rachel Carson is a um, well known for um, Silent Spring, but she's also an amazing naturalist and natural history writer. So in Sense of Wonder, which I recommend um, you check out from the library if you haven't already. She's got a bunch of really great books, but that one, she said, what if what if you had never seen this before? Whatever that's in front of you that you're drawing, what if you've never seen it before? How would you look at it? And what if you knew that you would never see it again? How would you observe that? And, and that like makes me really emotional and moves me to tears. And it, and it really brings me back to, I want to be in this moment. The sunrise and the sunsets, that moment will never come again. So the next time you're out there and watching your sunrise or sunset, just take a breath and just notice it. What if you knew you would never see it again because you won't, right? That day is going to be done, but we just take it for granted. So nature journaling is this doorway to allow us to see nature more deeply. And, and when we do that, our lives become richer. So my hope for you is that you take your nature journal and that it reminds you to slow down, to notice what you're seeing, to wonder, ask tons of questions. And just smile and just be okay with none of the answers. Maybe make it a challenge. How many questions can you put on your page? Now, that's, that's pretty cool. How many questions can you come up with? Um, and I wish there was a way that we can, like, you know, touch bases again about this. Um, but for now, you'll, you'll just, you know, put that in your journal, and there will be a time when we can get together. Um, um, I'll, I'll just let you know, I do a free nature journaling club on Sundays, so everyone is welcome. Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Um, you can join um, by Zoom, and you can go to sparkinnature.com slash events, and I think Nicole will um, type that in there for you, and you can do more nature journaling with me. And I think with, with this kind of activity, the more frequently you do it, 
and do it with others, you, it's, you're going to learn it faster and it's going to become part of your practice, right? It might be hard for some of you if it's new, if you've never done this before, and that's totally okay, right? Drawing, nature drawing, it's all a, a skill. And what that means is that you can learn to do it better. No one was born knowing how to draw, right? We all learn it. And so there's hope for all of us. So um, my hope is that you'll be able to go out in nature, do some nature journaling, observe what you're seeing, record it in your journal. And then when we get together and share it, you're sharing that wonder with other people and connecting other people to nature. So um, if you enjoyed what you've seen today, stick around. There's another week. You can come on Sundays and, and join me um, for some more nature drilling. And um, let me just take a look at my slides to see if there was anything else that I wanted to um, share. Um, and Melinda, while you're looking at the slides, I'll yeah. just tell folks, if, if you'd like to save the chat today, you can go to the chat window because there are some links in there. And at the bottom lower right, there's a square box. It's white with three dots. If you click that, the first option is save chat, and then you can save it to your computer and have the links. All right, so um, I'm gonna stop my share. And I think what I wanna do, it's 6.30, so I wanna honor your time. And for those of you who have to go, um, just you know, free, feel free to log off. I'm gonna stick around for a few minutes. Um, so if anyone would like to ask any questions or if you wanna share,